Hi, my name is Dan Keen. I'm a composer, producer and musician based in London. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. As some of you will know, I'm an in-house composer for Spitfire Audio, and that means that I compose teasers, demos and trailers for some of their campaigns. And one thing that I did recently was their summer sale trailer, which you may have seen already. In fact, I've seen a few messages on Paul Thompson's YouTube channel, Christian's YouTube channel and the main Spitfire channels asking for a little bit of a walkthrough for the piece of music that was composed for it. Now I wrote this piece in about a day, um, kind of scrambling together various libraries, working to a temp piece of music and a working cut of the film. And so I thought it could be a good idea to lift the curtain and give you a peep inside what it's like to work on a project like this for a company like Spitfire Audio. So this is my project. As you can see, I've kind of broken the template down into the various instruments. We've got high percussion, low percussion, tuned percussion, winds, brass, guitars, keys, upper sheen, which I'm calling this kind of harmonic layer at the very, very top of the strings. And then we've got the main body of strings, and then we've even got some choir at the bottom. As you can imagine, with a trailer like this for a campaign like this, it's not about using one library, it's about showing the breadth of libraries that Spitfire Audio has to offer. So I'm using some wind and brass from Abbey Road. I'm using the new Hammers Library, which is obviously a percussion library, some BBC SO, the Dark Star Library, which I don't think really gets enough airtime, but it's a really cool synth library. Um, some of the guitars here from Albion Solstice, mainly BBC SO, LCO strings for these vivid staccatos, and finally the choir at the bottom, which is from Albion Solstice as well. So Let's just play through what I've got and then I'll show you the temp, what my brief was and then how I've put the piece together. Now this wasn't actually the final version of the film, but it is what I had to work to. Now if we have a listen to the temp quickly, you'll hear it's a bit of a different vibe. I always find it really interesting listening to different people's interpretations of the same film. But in this case, I think it was a cut up version of one of Christian's demos, I think for Albion Solstice. It sounds like Solstice anyway. So basically my brief for this was to create something really cinematic, kind of action-like. Um, and I guess with this, you know, there is a general climax towards the end of the film. What they didn't like about the current piece was that it didn't feel like it had enough energy in there. So I started with some percussion. And if we just have a quick listen to the high percussion, in fact, I'll play both at the same time here. So I kind of started around this middle section. There was a bit of a gear shift here from when Olafur puts his hands down on the piano for Stratus.
So as you can hear there, I'm really kind of hitting the beats, but I'm not trying too hard here. And if they wanted to get, you know, one frame shorter or longer in places, I was gonna leave that to the, the video guys to do that. So once I had my percussion layers in, I think the next thing I added was some piano. I wanted to decide roughly what the harmony was gonna be. And in this case, I was using the Hans Zimmer piano, which on its own sounds like this. So this helps to kind of build in some of the momentum, but also not overcomplicate the harmony. I really like the sound of a big grand in a big hall. Uh, this was recorded in Air Studios and you can feel that weight. I've, I'm using all of the microphones, which I can't show you right now because I've frozen all the tracks in place, but um, I was using all of the microphones, in particular the ambient and the gallery microphones, just to get that feeling of, of kind of weight. Then we've got the solstice bass underneath, again, just to kind of iron out the harmony. So what I've done here is I've added some distortion to kind of add to that slightly gritty overdriven sound. I've then added the dark star as well. So to begin with, I've just got like long sub hits. But by the time you get to the louder sections, I quite like the idea of hitting a note and then coming straight off it. And once I had this in place, I thought, well, I may as well add some of the Abbey Road brass. So this is just the low brass tenuto. I've got this belly pad here and I'm using the LFO tool to give this slight kind of side chain pumping effect. Now I personally find that adding lots of simple layers really enriches the sound as opposed to having just a few quite loud dominant layers. So you'll see that in some places I'm kind of, I'm not duplicating, but I'm adding more of the same kind of sound. This is the Olaf Arnold Swarms from Stratus. And then I'm pairing that with the rhythmic attacks um, so I'm actually arpeggiating these. And this just helps to kind of add to the madness that builds. Um, I've got the Orbis Bells texture as well. again to build up some of that harmony. And as you can hear, it just kind of gradually gets bigger and bigger, higher and higher, um, until we arrive at the climax at the end of the piece. This Woodwind Evolutions, is a nice way to kind of marry up the hybrid textures between organic and electronic instruments. And you can hear if I just pair this now with my Albion Neo Winds. The winds from Albion Neo, I think, are one of my favourite woodwind patches of all time. I, I, I don't know if it's just because it's got saxophones in it, because I don't typically like saxophones too much in orchestral material, um, but it just sounds so warm and yet there's that nice reedy sound. It just really kind of helps to, I don't know, add to the sense of emotion, I guess. Um, I'm also using some high winds as well. This is mainly to appeal to Christian's side because if you get him on board with some of these system sounds, he um, he tends to like what you're about to send to him. So that was that was mainly for his benefit. But I find that it really does help to add, especially in the kind of beats 
three and four, you know, at the end of, of a chord sequence. Any of these little rhythmic passages can just really help to add a lot of weight to your score. While we're here, I may as well just show you the strings and show you what they're doing. So it might be a little bit intimidating seeing all of these lines at once and you think kind of, how, how am I going to be able to do that? Where should I start with something like that? The, the best way to start, I think, is just to decide what your tune is. Um, and I'd already set that out with the brass, so I thought I'd just take that line and do the same thing on the first violins. In fact, I've doubled this, so I've got it an extra octave higher as well. If I just kind of pair that with the seconds. And the reason I chose BBC SO is because I think it has the best portamento slides and the most kind of realistic legatos of the libraries that I've used by Spitfire. So in the going down into the violas here, I'm using a combination of spiccato and colegno to add to the kind of bitey rhythms that you hear. So using the combination of the colenios with the spiccatos I find just really helps to add to the kind of frenetic nature of this piece. You'll notice that I don't start it with that. I think it's easy to try and throw everything in right from the very beginning. And to combat this, I find that I should just start later in the film and work backwards. You know, if I've set everything up, I know that I can kind of avoid certain layers rather than bedding in the mix right at the very beginning and then having no headroom at the end. You can see here that I'm using the LCO Strings Vivid Staccato. Which, just to give context with the rest of the mix here, sounds like this. And to compare it with the keys layers that we'd already set up here, sounds like this. Lovely. Moving on, we've got some Hansima strings here. And the reason I use these is primarily for the hall. It just gives a really, really lovely sound, but also having the ability to put certain instruments on one side of the room versus others is actually very helpful for this kind of slightly more hyped produced sound. So I'm using Hansima strings, 20 celli on the left, 20 celli on the right. And then I've got my violins galleries, um, which is the kind of super flautando sound. And this is a fairly late addition. As you can hear, it doesn't necessarily add loads to the bed of this mix, but when we hear at the very beginning of the piece, this really helps to kind of add that air-like quality at the very top. The only elements that I haven't really talked about yet are the Albion Neo String A's Long Blended. Mm. 
Again, I just really like the way this sounds. Very privileged at Spitfire to have access to all of the libraries. And it does feel a little bit like I'm just throwing stuff at the wall, but believe me, I go through each kind of preset and find little sounds that I really like and want to bring out. In particular, I really like the sound of the rosin and the vibrato on the strings in this one. It's quite passionate sounding. Um, in fact, this was the thing that started the sound, the melody off for me. So I've already got it here in the violins and I'm just kind of duplicating it really. Often I find that the simplest elements end up being the best ones. Um, not trying to do anything that kind of reinvents the wheel necessarily, just trying to create something that's emotional and kind of delivers on uh, that feeling of kind of growth from nothing to something huge at the end. I'm using some symphonic motions here, um, which to be honest, I hadn't really used much of before, but it just helps to add a little bit more rhythm. And with this, I've got 100% tight. I'm not using any reverb. It's just for that digger, 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 really, really kind of uh, percussive. And when we compare this alongside the LCO strings and the violas and cello here as well, it just helps to add a little bit more momentum. The very final layer that goes into the string sound is the chamber strings violin one harmonics. Really, this should be bedded into the upper sheen um, because this has a very similar sound to it as well. I used the Colinio Tratto from Hans Zimmer Strings and also the Eric Whitaker Choir Pitched Air. If you haven't tried that out before and you've got the library, I'd really, really highly recommend it. It sounds great. And those little high frequency kind of movements here and there really just add another kind of element to the whole piece. In fact, if we just play with the keys here as well, particularly in the earlier sections where we don't have loads of instruments playing, it just really adds to a sense of mystery, a sense of motion, um, of movement as well. Moving on, we've got some guitars here. Um, this is from the Gut Circle from Albion Solstice, the motors. I've actually done something a little bit bad. I've exported them and then quantized them really heavily. This isn't really something you should hear. It's more just to add to the sense of rhythm. And while I really like the kind of gentle ensemble playing that this library has, I just needed it to be really kind of on the grid so that it doesn't get in the way, it doesn't become messy. Um, I really love the way it sounds normally, but in this context needs a little bit more kind of, um, bit more kind of refinement. You don't even really hear it, but it's so subtle, it just helps to add a little bit more. So I've got them hidden here um, and I'm literally just kind of playing them in one line at a time, but, um, but it sounds great and it just helps to add a little bit more texture. One of the first elements that went in were these great swells. This is the long crescendo from the trumpets and horns at Abbey Road 1. And if you just hear how this kind of beds itself in. So where we start here, I needed a little something something on where it says save 40% on individual products. So I've got this little bass drum damped sound. That you just know that something's coming. Um, and then I've kind of washed in, I'm kind of trying to blur the fact that I've added a 5-4 bar and I'm just adding that in to where the conductor here conducts straight into the beat. I don't tend to do that kind of thing normally, um, but I think it works really well. So if I just solo, these together, you'll hear the effect they have. Now, 
Now, from this moment on, we need to start feeling some sense of momentum, some changes, some gear changes each time there's a different shot. So with this, again, not trying to sink too heavily to the cut points, but I wanted to make sure that we've got good harmony, um, which I started in the strings. I think I've already shown you that really. So if I just play the whole mix from here. So as you can hear there, the main thing that kind of builds momentum is the drums and also just these little high woodwinds that we've got coming in here. If I just solo these together, you'll hear the kind of back and forth that they have. Some of my favorite sounds to use are the um, hammers, snares off. And again, I play these all in on my keyboard, but it just helps to kind of create a little bit more of a human sound. Um, you can hear that I'm using the warps as well. These are the rototoms. Just adds little bits of ear candy here and there. Um, I've done a similar thing that I did with the gut circle with the shakers. Just went in and just really made sure that everything was right on the beat. This is Spitfire Percussion. And it's simple enough, but as you can hear, I'm passing it through the Echo Boy. And one of the key things that I'm doing with this, um, I'm setting it to an eighth note. So it's not doing too much to add strange kind of rhythmic features and things. But the main thing I've done here is I've swapped the left and right, which if you've got stereo panning turned on, you can just hold down command and just click this and it automatically switches sides. So that's quite handy. A couple of other little kind of production tips and tricks that I've got here. Um, for the most part, I'm just using two reverbs. I've got my cinematic rooms, which is a two second reverb. And then this also, I've got another cinematic rooms and this is a three second reverb. Cinematic rooms is my favorite reverb of choice. And I'm gonna do a whole review on it soon because they're a great company, Liquid Sonics, um, and they've supported me and it's, uh, it's just such a musical sound. I wouldn't typically need more than one instance of cinematic rooms normally, because it sounds so realistic, but with something like this, I needed to have the balance between a closed, kind of more chamber sound and a larger, grander scale as well. You can see I've got a delay here as well. Um, so this is the delay that I was using for the percussion. However, when we scroll down into my strings, I've also got a string echo. I've talked about this on the channel before as well. Um, this is just just my perfect string echo. It's what I use on pretty much every string bus I have. It's not something you should really hear too much. So if I just play this and give you the, the tail. It just kind of trails behind slightly. And I think it just sounds great. It helps to kind of meld all these different layers together. As you can hear from something as dry as LCO strings through to BBC SO, through to Hans Zimmer strings, three very different recording environments. But as you can hear, it sounds relatively uh, well contained between all of the parts. If I just show you the brass quickly, at the very beginning here, we've got this Albion Neo brass long hollow. Um, this is a very kind of it's a very unusual sound and I wouldn't typically pair it as a, as a kind of orchestral thing, but again, I'm trying to make this slight kind of hybrid connection, if you listen to this. Yeah. 
Because of that slight undulating pitch, it suggests that there's something a little bit kind of foreboding. I wouldn't normally write something as kind of um, heroic and majestic as this theme, but because the brief was heading more in that kind of cinematic action kind of trailer sound, um, it was it was allowed for this kind of project. Otherwise, I tend to go slightly on the darker side, specifically with Spitfire. Often it's the slightly darker, slightly kind of diminished chord sound that they tend to favor. So, so it's just interesting between projects, sometimes they want something slightly different. The tune is being, uh, the melody rather, is being duplicated by the French horns, a four, so four French horns playing legato. And then I've got singular horns playing the chords underneath. So little things like changing the velocity, as you can hear, this note here, oops, this note here is um, 127, so it's a really loud kind of fortissimo note. If I were to soften that note a little bit, you'd get a softer entrance to the note. So it's always worth thinking about. Another thing I'd recommend is always leaving a little bit of gap where you think there should be a breath. It makes things sound so much more realistic and I would really highly recommend it. Um, that's always something I think about, especially if it's gonna get played by real players as well. It's awful turning up to a session and for the players to have to create their own breaths, which might be unmusical depending on what the rest of the arrangement's gonna be doing as well. For the rest of the arrangement, you can hear I'm not really doing too much more um, with the brass, except I'm adding a couple of different elements here. So this is actually not Abbey Road 1, this is the BBC SO. And it sounded really nice and really regal, and I liked it, but I wanted something really kind of piercing. So I decided to go down to Abbey Road again and grab the long trumpets. And even though there isn't a legato transition, when you pair them both together, it just helps to add that really kind of nice gritty upper frequencies. And in the context of the mix, I mean, it's super, super subtle, but it's there. It is noticeable. Now, you can hear that I'm not really doing too much in the low registers. The reason for this is because I'm compensating with the keys. So I never feel like I have to fully bed out my orchestral arrangement. This isn't an orchestral campaign. This is a full kind of bandwidth uh, project. So I wasn't too bothered about that. But I guess if I didn't have so many keys elements, I probably would have added some trombones, maybe some bass trombones as well, perhaps even a tuba line. The only other thing I've got to mention really is the hosts. And the reason for this, and again, I don't like to do this too often, but the reason why is because we've got a choir here and it just didn't make sense not to have any voices where there is clearly a vocal library in this, uh, in this summer sale. Again, it's so kind of quiet in the mix if I play you what it sounds like. but I just wanted someone to notice that I put in some choir as well. Um, I guess you could say similarly that I've used uh, Hans Zimmer strings where there are Hans Zimmer strings, although that's not too noticeable. But the main thing here is that brass motif as the, as the trumpet's being shown. Again, these are little things that I think appeal more to marketeers and visual people than they do to musicians. I wasn't going to create a piece of music that was less musical just so it hit those points or just so that it kind of steered into the visuals. Again, you can swap out a clip for something else if you want to, um, but the music should stay kind of true to the music. Um, 
So yeah, that's about it really. I mean, as you can hear, there's lots of elements in there, but it's not too complicated a piece. And again, it's only about a minute long, so it's not a super long trailer. Thanks so much for watching this video until the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done already. Loads of really exciting things coming soon. Take care, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.